The term why is often used when somebody doesn't understand something, especially fully. That might be the question that you are asking right now. What is crystals of the internet and what are you doing? Well, basically, I'm kind of fed up with my upload schedule, basically. I've been thinking about this series for a while now and I've thought about it for at least a week or two. I kind of want to just do this because I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm done with thinking and I want to do action. So that's what I'm doing right now. Basically, I like I want to experiment with this. I want to try this out. I also want to get to 10K subs this year on YouTube. Half the year is already gone. <laughs> so there's that. Honestly, I got inspired by people like Critical, Anthony Fantano, and some ordinary gamers. I watch those people a lot and I love them to death. They're great human beings. I want to increase my like watch time on my channel because as you see here, this has been on my mind for years and I'm so frustrated because it's slowly increasing little by little, but I, I just want to get to that 4,000 hours now because I'm sick and tired of not getting AdSense. <laughs> That's not the only reason though. Honestly, this series will give me a chance to highlight creators that I wasn't originally planning on making videos about simply because either their channels or creativity isn't enough for a 10 to 15 big dissection video. Some things that we're gonna cover are gonna be like pretty simple, especially like with animation stuff, you know? Like for the most part, animation is good because it looks good. Or there are some animations where you know it looks good and the story's good and everything like that right and i also want to highlight some creators that i've been thinking about making a videos about years ago but never did because i feel like it's too like suggestive or whatever basically i'm gonna cover creators that i've never talked about publicly all these are really good creators and i highly recommend them for sure it's gonna be mostly small people there's gonna be a few big ones here and there but i'll have specific reasons for those in general i'm not gonna cover music channels because I want to be able to show you what I'm talking about. And regarding music, it's a tricky thing to do on YouTube. And I like to share and show you what I'm talking about. Basically, I'm going to do this for 31 days in a row. And then after that, we're going to go back to the huge projects like the Oneros video, which is like 22 minutes long. And I got another big project in the works that was supposed to come out uh, this month and last month. But uh, this happened and I, I couldn't stop thinking about this series. So I guess it's time to finally do it. I understand that me going from posting once a month to basically daily for a month might be a bit much. It might be overwhelming, and I understand that. So if that's not for you, I totally respect that. And in fact, after this month is over, I'm going to make a huge compilation video of all of the things in one video, kind of like the YouTubers I'm thankful for video. But basically, this series is going to be like a mini version of that where we dissect the specific creators like in specific videos. It's like gems of the Internet but it's a smaller version of that in a sense. So it's either like YouTubers I'm thankful for, except it's based on like one creator per episode, or it's like gems of the internet, but lower budget. Basically, I don't blame you for leaving at any point in time. And, I, and also, if I'm being real, I've gotten to a point with my creativity where it's really hard to do because I'll edit for people all day, and at the end of the day, I wanna do nothing except play video games because my brain is just fried from editing for everybody else. And I want to make my own content because I've gotten to this point where I've, I need to scratch that creative itch because I haven't gotten it in a while and it sucks. So this is a good way for me to do it. Plus, I think it'll be fun. Like thinking about this idea really has sparked the creativity within me and, I, and I'm excited for it. But yeah, this is going to be basically season one. This is the intro. I know people have missed my videos and that happens a lot. So I'm hoping that this will help with that, at least for a little bit. And then, like I said, we're going to go back to the big projects after this month is over for sure. I'm going to do some comparison on like analytics and subscriber counts. So right now I think I have like 2.4 thousand. So at the end of this, I'm wondering if that'll bump up a lot, because if it doesn't, then it'll prove that quantity doesn't matter, which I've preached for so long. I want to make a bare bones version of what I do. I make videos about indie projects. That's one aspect. I want to highlight good creators. That's another aspect, you know? And this series is basically the bare bones gems of the internet in a weird sense. I'm not scripting anything. I have bullet points for questions that I'm going to ask. And actually, I want to cover all the questions that we're going to ask with every single creator that we're seeing here in order to figure out like the deeper meanings and like what makes them good, you know, objectively. And that's the other thing. I want to be very objective in this. I'm going to go back to normal content after this month for sure. By normal, I mean the big projects, the 20 minute big projects that I'm super passionate about. But right now I want to do this 
for a while because I want to test it out. So the questions that we're going to cover in these episodes is what is the genre of the content? You know, what specific type of content are we looking at, right? What is the visual quality? Now, visual quality is very important with art of any kind. If your visual quality is trash, then a lot of people are going to be turned off by that. So your visual quality has to be good regarding art. If it isn't, then that's going to be a problem. And the other one is audio quality. If your visual quality is amazing, but your audio quality is trash, that's going to be a problem, right? And by audio quality, that could be like microphone, that could be sound effects, that could be music, like could be pacing, you know? What is the purpose of the content? So basically, I think a lot about purpose in content. Like, what is the point of videos? A lot of people say entertainment, and I understand that, but I feel that content needs to have a purpose. And the whole purpose of this series is to make more videos in less time but also to highlight creators that I believe are good, but that I wouldn't normally cover in a big series because I don't feel like that it makes sense to put a whole lot of time into making something like that, especially when I want to focus my creativity mostly on projects that not a lot of people know about, which is why nowadays I don't think I would make videos about like Doug Doug because he's pretty big at this point. And I don't, I think he was smaller before, but like I wouldn't make a video about him now, even though it's one of my more popular videos. I want to focus more on creators that like hardly anybody knows about because I think that can provide more value to people. But this series is going to cover people of all sizes, mostly smaller channels is what I try to focus on. Is there a story? Is there a story? Some, some content has like a story element, some don't, and that's okay. It really depends on what kind of content it is. Why do people like it? So I want to understand why people would like this thing, you know, objectively. And I think that's very important to be objective in media. And I, I see a lot of people being subjective in media, and I personally don't like that, which is why I strive so hard to be very objective and like talk about the facts and talk about what's actually happening rather than trying to construe a narrative based on opinions and i don't like that personally and then is there a deeper meaning some things have deeper meanings some things don't and i'm aware of that not everything has a deeper meaning do i try to connect a real meaning to it yes because i want to make sure that you can take something away from the content like there's an actual lesson because if you don't take anything from the content what's the point in watching the content in my opinion some people just want to laugh and have fun and that's cool but for my content specifically, I want to be able for people to actually learn from it. That sounds pretty cool, right? I know. This is going to be a very interesting journey because I've never done anything like this on the main channel. I'm scared. I like if I'm 100% honest, I'm scared that people are going to leave in like three episodes, 10 episodes, 20. I feel like people are just going to leave, you know, and that's a fear of mine. But at the same time, I need to do this because I feel and that's now I'm going into subjective. That's not good. I think that this will help me creatively because I want to make more videos for people to show other people really good creators. And this is a, a good way to highlight creators that I normally wouldn't cover, even though I do think they're good. But yeah, all right, hope you stick around. It's gonna be interesting and uh, yeah. A fox in space, what is a fox in space? A fox in space, is basically if you were to take Star Fox and make it an animated series, which in concept you think it would have already been done, but it hasn't, which is really weird. You think that something like this would exist already, and it does, but it's here, right? And so what's interesting about this specifically is that they only have one episode from 2016, 2.6 million views. But the most of this channel is basically like clips and behind the scenes stuff, because if not, then it would just be less one thing. What this person is really good at is documentation. Like they understand that when you are making big projects, you should probably have some clips or behind the scenes or something because people have been waiting for four years <laughs> for episode two of this project. And honestly, like, <sighs> It's so good. The genre is parody animation. It's pretty cool, actually, because like I said, it really feels like a, an actual Star Fox series. So if you click this, I'm going to mute it. But like if you look at it here, it reminds me of those like really old cartoons from like the 80s or 90s ish in the way it's animated. I'm pretty sure it's hand drawn too, from what I remember. 
but look it's like so smooth and it's like so colorful and so polished ah it makes like i watch i watched this last night and it's actually like really good and like not only that but literally the voice acting oh my gosh the voice acting in this is actually really good and really believable and it it shocks me like it's crazy because it's like every single character in this specifically has like their own little quirks and everything oh, it's so good it's so crazy let me see if i can find a specific instance there's one that i found oh it's this one like here no i j just got up huh. hey Peppy, come here yeah hold on a minute <laughs> I love this nope, way too much. Right. This what is. Have you seen Fox today? <laughs> no, I haven't seen him for a while. You can tell that each character has like their individual quirks and everything, and it's really cool to see. Not only that, but the music is actually pretty good too, from what I remember. The purpose of this content is obviously entertainment, but it's also like there's a storyline built into it, which is really cool. And it's a storyline that's very in and of itself. Like you, I'm pretty sure you don't need to play Star Fox in order to enjoy this. Like I've never played Star Fox before and I enjoy this so much. So yeah, there, there very much is a story present. That's kind of the whole point. It's like a very narrative driven story there's just so many effects in it too honestly you can tell that like a lot of care was put into this and i'm pretty sure it's animated by like one guy i'm pretty sure it's only one guy but he actually plays like two of the care oh the main guy plays like two of the characters and it you can't tell it's crazy written edited and directed by yeah matthew gafford made this really good i highly recommend this i wasn't expecting to make like a big video about this and maybe i will in the future but the problem is there's only one episode the first episode was from 2016 it's 2020 four years and he's still working on episode two so i feel like it's hard to cover something that's still like being made you know like the gray area video i made maybe i should make a video about this like a main channel video like here like when i saw this i was kind of amazed then what would you like to call it kidnapping it's only standard detainment procedure that's why we took your boots off and your belt and your shirt and all that. Why, do you think I'm going to hang myself? Dave? I just, do you, it's so, ah, oh my gosh. He's so talented. Like, honestly, crazy. And what was also pretty interesting about this is I actually saw a comment from somebody that I was not expecting. I saw a comment from Nakey Jakey on this channel and that weirded me out. I was not expecting that. So apparently Nakey Jakey knows about this, which is interesting. So he's starting to make the series in Blender now, and it's still hand-drawn. Handful of scenes remaining to be animated for episode two going to be hand-drawn and animated entirely in Blender. Yeah, so he used, I think, Adobe Animate or something. No more Adobe Animate, Illustrator, After Effects, Photoshop, Vegas video. Other than my music programs, when it will be the only thing I use to create my... Okay. Art is still 100% hand-drawn. This is hand-drawn animation. Like, this is hard to find nowadays, you know? Unless you're Disney. Cleaner, more organized, and easier to color for Blender. Lighting is automatic. So, Blender will hopefully help his production quality, honestly. Because it looks good. And, like, if you look at a clip... And yeah, like, I'm pretty sure this was done in Blender. And it looks gorgeous. Like, it's so smooth. Why do people like this? I feel like, initially, you would like it because of Star Fox. But even if you don't like Star Fox, you can still find enjoyment in this for sure. And I think people like it because of like the audio quality, the visual quality, the characters, the voice acting. I, it's a very well-loved project and you can very much tell. You can very much tell because in this video right here, it's crazy. They read the same lines so many times just to get that perfect take. And you can tell because of this specific video right here. Hey now, nobody said I couldn't come visit. Hey now, nobody said I couldn't come visit. But I want to get like five or ten of each sure. one if, if, if you're alright. You see what I Except mean? The, you like, have to eat well. <laughs> we might, wow. we might, uh, there are, there are 20 there, so you get lots. You, time. you, you can do 20 to... takes and that's it. <laughs> it's just so much care is put into this and it's, it's, it's honestly amazing. Deeper meaning, like I don't think there's necessarily a deeper meaning. The meaning is in the narrative but the narrative is still being made so it's tough to tell what like the meaning is obviously it's entertainment and i don't think it's striving to be better than it is i think it's striving to be like a narrative driven story you know and it's also like pretty funny it's got some comedic parts here and there i'd rate this like pg-13 because there are there are a few jokes and scenes where you're like mm, what's going on here but it's still kind of funny
I think this one's definitely worth a watch, honestly. Especially because there's only one episode and it's only 13 minutes long. Adler Davidson. Now, I know that there's at least one person watching that's like, finally, he makes a video about this guy. See, the problem is, right, I made a video about this guy's comedy special, which is really good. And I highly recommend you watching that because that's pretty good. But I haven't made a video about, like, this guy in general. Because I feel like there's not a lot to say about this guy other than, like, he's funny, you know? If you want to laugh, watch this guy, you know? Past that point, it's hard to, like, dissect it because there's not a lot it's just like he writes jokes he be funny and i can't make a 10 to 20 minute video obviously saying that over and over again he's decently funny what i will say is he's pretty like clean he's in that like blimey cow community where his comedy is like very niche it's not trying to be edgy and it's not trying to be like crass in any way which a lot of people like appreciate that i do too but i also appreciate like edgy dark comedy so i like i appreciate both fields but like his his music videos though i will say his music's pretty good the common theme is obviously comedy he'll take whatever idea he has and like make a comedic form to it the genre is also music because he makes some songs here and there that are pretty funny i think i found it from like the blimey cow community because he's in that field visual quality is good you know high high quality you know both in like visuals and with camera quality you know like he's very artistic i would say he's got some visual effects here and there you know audio quality is good you know the mics mics good mic sounds good which is obviously very important yeah in like the the five-year plan is where his like audio quality really shines because he has like a few songs here and there he has some like audio jokes in a sense and they're pretty funny the purpose of the content is obviously like comedy and to make people laugh and it's very nice to see somebody so pure of heart making these videos there's not really like a story you know because each each one is kind of set in its own universe type beat um the only like story driven thing here is basically his stand-up where he's got like narrative bits here and there i think people like it because of like the clean comedy and just like the non-edginess because some people like that and also because he's part of like the blimey cow community i think that's another reason why people like him i think he's he's also appeared in some blimey cow videos here and there this is not really a deeper meaning it's just like hey here's a funny idea you know which is kind of nice so you're welcome chris aroa i think that's how you pronounce it please don't uh kill me the genre of O'Hara, it's right here. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. Basically, it's animations. Wow, wacky. I, I literally can't remember how I find it. I think this person subscribed to me or something like that. I'm not. I Or I found them on. I think I found them on Twitter. I'm not 100% sure. Visual quality. Obviously, by the thumbnails, you can tell that they're very high quality. Uh, like, nation, look at this. According to kids .national -geographic oh, my gosh. Self With that being said, as revenge... I'm gonna be fumigating mother nature but before we get to that <laughs> i'm gonna tr basically this is a good combination of like 2d and 3d animation which is really cool visual quality is really good see and it's also reminiscent of like nerd city scenes right here with like the the screen Wait. very much reminds me of like nerd city see what's weird is that like in his older videos he doesn't have like lip syncing europe africa but then in like his newest video he has lip syncing and it looks really good and really clean for a channel with 100,000 subscribers, this visual quality is, like, incredible. Honestly. Like, this is really good. Every single spring to summer, nature looks at my rap sheet and says, Yo, frick this guy. And although I'm usually <laughs> accustomed to this kind of reaction upon <laughs> someone looking at my... There's a lot of, like, visual and audio gags with this channel, which is very nice. I really appreciate that. Basically, this video is about, like, seasons and how he wants to destroy them, which, yeah. No, I get it. No, That's no, it? You're no, no, done? no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Purpose of the content is obviously entertainment, and it seems like that there's some narratives driven. So it's like he's ranting, but he's also has like a narrative built, but he also has these characters that are visual and audio gags, you know? This, yeah, so it is like it's pretty narrative driven, which is interesting. At least like with his newer ones. People like it, obviously, because of the visual quality and the comedy. I think that's very clear. Deeper meaning? Not really. I mean, like, I don't think so, personally. I think it's just funny to be funny, you know? Which is kind of cool. And look, he has all these inspirations. Yeah, I see Odd Ones Out, Slinky, something else, Get Mads. Yeah, no, I understand the inspirations here. That makes a lot of sense. Check him out. A Kind Ale War. 
Now, this is going to be very interesting to talk about. I like because this channel is literally where basically imagine a game review, but the guy is drunk. That's basically the epitome of a kind deal war. The genre is a weird combination of like analysis, game reviews, and comedy mixed or reviews in general, I would say. He's got videos about games. He's got videos about E3. He's got videos about anime. It's mostly games though. He also has a podcast, but I don't listen to his podcast because I think his uh, his his uh, video reviews are are better. But you know, whatever. Uh, I literally can't remember how I found this guy. I think because he's friends with like Pyro and, and maybe I'm not sure. Visual quality is really really good because uh, it's a weird combination of like kind of animation, but he also shows like game footage, you know, for his older videos and his newer videos. He does this really cool like green screen. So we either does like animations with his videos or he does like that green screen thing which either or it's it's pretty funny audio quality is good you know like his mic quality it's it's very much like this because his mic is literally like up to his face <laughs> purpose of the content is entertainment and reviewing and telling people hey why is this game good or hey why is this game bad but it's mostly hey why game bad you know there's not really like a story you know because all he's doing is re just reviewing games and stuff there's no real like narrative built to it people like it because of the comedy people like it because the guy's voice is pretty interesting because he's either british or australian i'm not 100 percent sure but he's got a good voice and he's got a good sense of humor even though the reason i i haven't made a video on this guy is because his humor is kind of uh, how do we say this? Uh, yeah, imagine like a drunk guy trying to review stuff, you know, so obviously you're gonna get some crass jokes here and there. But overall, like they do land and they are pretty funny if you're into that sort of humor, you know, and that's the weird thing. It's it's like it's very niche regarding like that kind of humor. Uh, no, there's there's not. No, it's not a deeper meaning. There's no way <laughs> it really isn't. He literally made a, a video where he carves a chicken with a presser, pressure washer. So <laughs> which was a pretty good video i'm not gonna lie but it was very different from what he normally does so yeah if you're interested in this kind of weird animation review humor based type content that's edgier then yes definitely all gas no breaks i actually found this because of critical and honestly this is a really interesting thing because it's one of those channels that you look at and you're like oh wow this guy is probably one of the most objective people on the platform. I'm not going to lie. More objective than Philip DeFranco. And I find Philip DeFranco to be pretty objective most of the time. But this guy, he is he is the most objective. Why? Because basically the genre of his content is he's going out into the field and he's basically being a reporter. But like he barely says anything. He lets people talk of like any kind of person, honestly. And it's really interesting to see. Because he'll go to like the Flat Earth conference, you know, he will he went to a fourth of, a beach on Fourth of July when the pandemic was happening, you know, he went to the Minneapolis protest, he went to the rocket launch, you know, he went to the Fur Fest. And all he does is he goes to these places and like he interviews people. What's great about this is he's not never trying to string a narrative, you know, he's always like letting the people talk and he lets them talk even for like way too long. Not only that, but the videos are actually pretty short, so they're easily consumable. And not only that, but they're also like highly edited. Like there's a bunch of jump cuts, a bunch of zooms. There's a few memes here and there, like he'll meme on some people here and there, but like, which makes the videos way better. So imagine like a reporter, but like it's very like meme heavy and like there's a lot of jump cuts, not to like construe a narrative, but just to like keep up the pacing of it, you know, it's really good obviously if you're interviewing people there's going to be a few words here and there that are going to be kind of eh or, or you know like ooh, you know so there's some edgy stuff here and there not gonna lie especially like he literally went to the minneapolis protest <laughs> so obviously you're gonna get some people who are colorful with their words like and especially like nowadays going to public places is a very interesting thing nowadays so like he'll he'll wear a mask now you know that's really the only change in content but still he's going out in the field he's interviewing these people and being very objective which i do appreciate audio quality is good because he's got a microphone to people's faces which is also covered in like 
a cloth or something. I don't know, but it's like he's he's trying here. He's trying so hard to like be like cautious and everything. And I do appreciate that. Purpose of the content is obviously to be very objective when it comes to informing people. I'm I'm hearing a vacuum right now. Great. <laughs> the story is really based on who's there. You know, there's not really a story. It's just a bunch of accounts from different people, you know. I think people like it because of like the craziness of some people, the objectivity, you know, how the guy is like cautious about going to these places. He's wearing a mask. He's being he's being safe. You know, he's giving people platforms that they normally wouldn't get. So it's a very like objectively fair way to like report by not influencing a narrative, just being there and like purely reporting, which not going to lie. We don't see a lot of that nowadays. I'm not. So it's really nice. Anthpo. Now, Anthpo, he has 800,000 subscribers. This is going to be one of those creators that I cover because I think it's really interesting what he does now and what he used to do and the transition he's made between that. I think it's really interesting and I don't see a lot of people do it. Originally, he started off making these like going into public and doing weird things videos like ruining college as Perry the platypus dressing up as a crab and watching my pe and watching people eat my family which is an amazing video and I love it but because of the lockdown he's had to stay inside you know so what he's done is he's transitioned to these weird reviews initially so he reviewed colleges he reviewed white people he reviewed chowder and then literally two months ago he started making these videos called every episode of so every episode of Phineas and Ferb, iCarly, The Office, Wimpy Kid, Avatar and they have blown up so he's gotten a lot of subscribers since this whole lockdown thing because he's transitioned his content which honestly i love this kind of content it's really funny the every episode of is basically a very condensed comedic version of the original thing which is obviously really funny even if you don't watch something like i've never watched iCarly but i watched this video and i thought it was pretty funny so if you like either like public comedic stunts or you like video essays about certain weird things, or you like little uh, parody skit type beat stuff, then you'll like this guy. He's also pretty funny. Genre is obviously comedy. Like there's obviously like a through line of comedy with his videos. He posts pretty consistently, like almost every week at this point, which is really nice. Audio quality is good, you know. Purpose of the content is obviously to make people laugh, which is very cool. Not really a story. The only way that there's a story is in his every episode of where he's literally condensing, like I said, condensing these shows and movies and stuff. People like it because they like to see parodies of popular stuff, you know? I think that's why a lot of people have been watching his like newer stuff because like, oh, I've seen Phineas and Ferb. Maybe I'll like this, you know? which is a very interesting way to make content. Not really a deeper meaning, which isn't a bad thing. For something like this, for something like comedy, you don't really need a deeper meaning, but the deeper meaning happens occasionally, and when it does, it's always great. Bagel Gabe. Now, I'm going to try very, very hard to be very objective, right? I can't remember if I covered this guy in the YouTubers that I'm thankful for video, but I have to at least mention this guy because, one, he's my friend, and I appreciate what he's doing but I'm going to try to be objective here, right? Basically, this guy makes uh, parody animations of Legos, mostly Lego SpongeBob. He has a Lego SpongeBob series, which is really funny because there's like meta comedy, there's current event comedy, and he'll do these live action videos too, but he mostly does the Lego SpongeBobs, which are pretty funny. Makes really good stuff. Visual quality is really good. It's very simplistic, but that's not bad either because it's really drawn out and good because of like the storyline and the jokes he writes in more so than like the actual like animation portion. Like there is animation, but it's very simplistic and is carried by jokes and narrative. Audio quality is good, you know. He's got a few voice actors here and there. Purpose of the content is obviously entertainment, you know, making people laugh with comedy. Crazy. The story really depends on the video because sometimes he'll do um, like two parters. Sometimes he'll do like series. And so those have like a narrative and a storyline built into it. And then you got these one offs. But each one has basically his own story. People like it because some people like Legos. I remember I used to make Lego videos. People could like it because of the comedy. People could like it because they know the guy. People could like it because 
of the current event comedy, which I do think is interesting. People could like it because of the meta comedy. People could like it because thing he combines things like SpongeBob and the Beatles, which is a very interesting combination. So basically, mostly Lego SpongeBob, but I'll do these live action videos occasionally. Not necessarily a deeper meaning. If anything, it'll be very, very subtle in these videos, in these like story driven videos. Baglets. Let's go. I found this because of Void Eon. And honestly, like this visual quality. Look at this. Do I have to say anything? Do you see how like clean that is? Like, oh my, it's so polished. It's so vibrant. It's so clean. Well, Dang. I suppose it was a bit more than an app, wasn't it? It's a brand new day. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 8 p.m. Nook. <laughs> <laughs> it's ka it's kind of 8 p.m. It's kind of 8 p.m. There's very natural comedy built into this, which is very funny. What this reminds me of, it's it's almost like this person was playing the game and was recording it, and then instead of showing you the gameplay, they just animated the scenes instead. That's kind of what this video specifically feels like. So this guy does animations, but also do like stream highlight stuff, which is interesting. Visual quality is obviously very high. You know, you can tell that a lot of work and dedication was put into this in terms of the content entertainment to put it vaguely like i love this most recent video with animal crossing i think it's really funny i think comedy is either comedy or i guess general would be entertainment the only time there's like a real story is if it's like one of these where it's like based on like a game people like it because it is very high why hello thank you very high quality animation like can you blame them not really a deeper meaning in a sense it's just good good fun animation deadly comics now i'm not gonna lie i initially and this might be sad to say but i was initially researching this for like a big video but then i realized that not not really a through line because each individual thing is like its own story there's just not like a lot to it because it's like each individual thing is its own narrative and story millennium hour gorgeous gorgeous animation gorgeous story gorgeous narrative i love it millennium hour is really good and then you go over to sad ones and it's very very different they're both good. Initially, they started off with like MLP stuff, but then transitioned into way more original stuff. And the more original stuff is pretty, pretty good because you can tell that the animation quality really like increased. So you go from this, right? You go from from this to to this, which is a very, very big jump. What's cool about this video is that there's a really cool like 3D and 2D mesh here, which is pretty cool. And what really caught my attention with this video specifically about Deadly Comics, I don't know why, but this animation reminds me of like Cartoon Network. It reminds me of Amazing World of Gumball. This part right here, that water is gorgeous. That water is gorgeous. Are you seeing this? Like, look at that. Oh my gosh, that alone is amazing. Regarding animation channels, this is definitely more of the high quality ones. And fun fact, this person actually subscribed to me and I'm like, oh, this profile picture looks kind of professional. Then I check the channel and I'm like, oh, these animations look very high quality. So definitely subscribe to this person. This person is incredible. I think it was really hard to make a video about this because they go from like these really cool like narrative driven like really good masterpieces they go from that to like to this where it's just like a random person singing which is it's not a bad thing at all it's just really interesting but it seems like that they're going more on like the narrative driven space which is really cool with animation it's hard to make a video about like a, a big video because there's not really like one main series each video is like its own individual thing which is really cool to see so you either got like really short videos that are like music or whatever and then you got these like longer narrative driven videos and the longer narrative driven videos i think are for film fests oh uh, yeah so this person makes a lot of thesis films and the thesis films are like gorgeous i i highly recommend those for sure definitely like just this alone is gorgeous like oh my gosh it's so good 
even like the late to work one which is from like 2014 is is pretty good animation wise in general though definitely worth a subscribe really high quality stuff audio quality is really good too the voice acting is is, is good i'm not gonna lie it's it's above average purpose of the content is entertainment and narrative driven animations the story is really dependent on the video you know there's some videos like this that have no story and then you have these really deeply narrative driven animations which are cool people like it because of the high quality animations the very story driven narratives this person makes a films for films fe festivals and it clearly shows deeper meaning it really depends on the um on the video you know with the narrative driven ones there's like a subtle hint at a deeper meaning which is really nice so i think that's cool to add in for sure does a thing now this channel specifically is a very interesting case study very much so very interesting case study because 110,000 subscribers that's a pretty decent amount it's nothing big necessarily but they only have like six videos and they're from like seven to six years ago and the people that made this channel have kind of disappeared off of the face of the earth like you check the channels and you see dave smith so dave smith is one of the people who made this right and they haven't made a video in two years on their channel so they've been gone for like two years right so this channel has been sitting here for so long and this guy also has other works that he's done but mostly it's this these are like really short high quality parody animations that are actually really funny i'm not gonna lie I think they do say some naughty words here and there, so that's a little disclaimer. But in general, they are uh, pretty funny. And, like, obviously, each one has, like, at least a million views. So you can tell that, like, they, they kind of popped off a while ago, you know? I just wish they would make more of these because these are so good. There's channels like this where it's hard to make, like, a big video on because there's only, like, six or seven videos. So I feel like if you make a video about this, it would have to be about, like, the creators behind this because there's not a lot of content here as you notice and i feel like more people would be interested in why there's not a lot of content rather than like the actual content you know which would be interesting which would be interesting maybe maybe i'll put that on the back burner who knows it would take you like less than 10 minutes to watch all of these and then you are craving more it's crazy i literally can't remember how i found this i found this like last month or something and i i genuinely don't know how i found it I think I literally typed does a thing into YouTube and this appeared. I'm not sure. Visual quality, it's very, very high. Like, it's ridiculous. It's very thickly drawn pencil animation, obviously, but it's like, it's pretty good. I think it really shows. Yeah, definitely in the Bomberman video, you can tell that like, it's very simplistic, but it's very detailed at the same time. Like the background is pretty simplistic, but then the character designs are like, really good it very it very much takes like a modern spin on these games on these like older things which is really cool and that's the other thing it really really focuses on these retro games like spyro and crash and bomberman these are like really retro things you know audio quality is good the voice acting is pretty decent from what i remember it's pretty funny though purpose is for entertainment honestly it's comedy it's it's straight up comedy it's taking a thing and putting a funny spin on it that's what it is each episode has like its own storyline which is really cool it subtly relates to like the main story but then it doesn't at the same time which is really cool people like it because again this is same with like the anthpo thing right people like to see parodies of thing of popular things you know so these games are obviously popular right and people love when people make animations and like parodies of them not necessarily a deeper meaning because it's kind of like a fun wacky hey what if this happened in this world kind of deal etra games etra games now i don't know if this person knows that i exist but i very much know that they exist right etra games is very interesting because the whole point really more recently is he has a series called how your parents can play and he tries so hard to teach his parents how to play video games now you think that would be very subjective, right? Not necessarily, because the whole point is he's trying to make games appeal to non-gamers, which I think is a very interesting concept for a channel. So it's very much focused on that. It has been for like a year. More recently, he's been testing out how your parents can play Journey, which was actually a really good video. He made a video essay on why 
parents don't play video games which are really good basically the whole point of the channel is trying to understand like the psychology of like the parents and non-gamers in general and then trying to make tutorials and stuff so that way non-gamers can enjoy like games which i think is a very interesting concept and i've never seen anybody do that only 60k subscribers bro that's like small that's crazy for a concept like this man it's very niche but it's also really good i think Somebody in my community mentioned this, and I think that's how I found out about it. Visual quality is really, really good. It's mostly informational, right? Because it's informational, it's not like very heavy on like the visual quality. Like it's entertaining and it's good, but it's more so informational than entertainment based, which I think is interesting, which makes sense because this guy's literally like teaching us and his parents how to play games. Purpose of the contents, obviously informational, very heavily informational, very analytical. There's not a story. The only story that I'm seeing here is like the narrative between like him and like his mom. He'll sometimes show like when they're testing out the games. It's very like documentational. I don't think that's a word, but you know what I mean? It's like he's very much into like documenting for sure. That's basically like this whole channel. People like it because... I think the whole concept of non teaching non gamers to play games is actually a pretty niche and interesting concept, which makes sense why the channel is so small, but really good stuff too. not necessarily a deeper meaning other than exploring game design. That's that's perfect way to put it. Games about exploring game design, but mostly trying to figure out how non gamers can play games in a very like natural and informative way. So that way it's not frustrating and it's very like objective and it's trying and what i love about glink is that he's very objective and he's always trying to be constructive with his work i have a perfect example of this actually this scene made me realize like how like objective he is is it right is it wrong and if you were to ask me i would not engage in a moral discussion but i'd rather point out the outcomes of only fans and that seems to be that both men and women are further isolating themselves from each other and they're participating in a service that capitalizes on loneliness yes very much so basically he wants to make discussions right he doesn't want to be subjective he wants to be very objective which i do appreciate because when i find those objective people i'm like i understand where you're coming from dude honestly purpose of the content is to be very objective and to document what's happening in the world mostly on the internet point of the content is to document like what's happening on the internet the current state of the internet certain aspects regarding it especially like with twitch culture and internet culture he doesn't really have like a story necessarily he'll build like these mini narratives in the sense of like he interviews people a lot in his videos so like he'll build stuff around that because those interviews in and of itself really like craft the video people like it because it really focuses on like what's happening on the internet now very much to find out about like the problems in the internet age and our current internet age I think this is very true with the golden ages. The golden age of the internet is over. I think that's very true. And I think that resonates with a lot of people, not necessarily a deeper meaning in general, but I think it's very important to really reflect on what's going on on the internet now and what went on the internet beforehand, for sure. How we easy. I think that's how you say it. The genre is comedy. He makes very short, very up to date with culture skits. I think I found it because YouTube was like, hey, you might like this video. And for once, I actually liked it. Wow, crazy. Visual quality is good. It's very simplistic, you know. You'll have some visual effects here and there, but for the most part, it's very simplistic in like the costumes and the characters, which is pretty interesting. He basically uses what he has available to him. Audio quality is good. I don't think he has songs in his videos unless they're at the end for dramatic effect i'm pretty sure purpose of this comedy making people laugh you know he like i said he's very up to date with like current events and he makes comedic videos about it he only has 200,000 subscribers which is pretty decent you know and he gets a lot of views depending on the video and the topic regarding like story he has like a little like story in these videos it really depends on the video each one is like in its own universe you know like he literally has a video where aliens move in people like it because they like to see commentary comedic commentary on current events 
and I think more and more people are doing this. I've seen a trend in the past year of people doing that for sure. The deeper meaning, I mean, it really depends on the video per se, I would say, because with some videos, it's just like, it's very obvious what it's going for. But then with other videos, you have like this subtle thing at the end or it just straight up says it, <laughs> you know, either way, but it works. Ice cream sundaes. Now, a little backstory. I actually met this guy at BlimeyCon when I went two years ago, which is weird to think about. But yeah, I went there. Basically, it was a lot of fun. I made a video about it on my channel. I vlogged it. So a season of the vlog was that. But basically, I met this guy named Scott. Scott's a pretty cool guy, right? And he has a YouTube channel. Now, the reason uh, he's on this list is because I am in a series with him that he does yearly called Humans React. Normally, I'm not the kind of person to make reactionary content. In fact, I think it's very low effort. But with this specifically, it's really fun because it's like a collaborative series with a bunch of people from like that Blimey Cow type group, which is pretty fun. And it's not just like reaction for the sake of reaction. Like everybody tries to come up with jokes based on what is appearing and like criticizing it and like figuring out like the lesson drawn from it and everything. It's actually pretty interesting. I'm, I don't want to say anything, but there's a new episode in the works. So hopefully that should be out sooner or later. I recorded my part like last month or something. So hopefully it'll come out soon. But yeah, a lot of people from like the Blimey Cow community are in this and it's pretty fun. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty fun time. It was pretty fun to record. Visual quality is good. You know, it's pretty simplistic. He's literally just showing the clips and then showing us talking about it. It's it's pretty simplistic regarding like the editing. Audio quality is, is, is good. I mean, it really depends on who who's in the video because there's some people, their mic is like really far away, but that's about it like regarding the audio for like for the most part it's pretty good i know my audio was good i literally used this mic and i synced it up to make sure it was it was good but for the most part like the audio quality is good there's no music regarding like the video unless it's like in the actual like episode that we're talking about the story i mean the story is literally like in the episode that we're like dissecting in a sense people like it apparently 2000 people like it so that's really cool i i'm kind of shocked that it's that many views but then again a bunch of people from this are literally like oh and i'm at the very Dazzle's beginning i forgot about that oh baby face Ooh, yeah let's see me joe kenny and chris and him somehow amassed uh, over 2000 the deeper meaning aspect i mean honestly it really depends because like with his older stuff like he has a short film like his earlier content is a bit everywhere but now he's kind of found his like voice which is kind of cool i mean the deeper meaning it really depends on like the episode and like what the episode is about but yeah new episode should be coming out soon i hope scott doesn't uh, crucify me for saying that but <laughs> james miller now this guy i met him because i am in a group with a bunch of creators and they're all really cool guys you know there's some pretty high quality creators in fact i'll put them right here check them out those those guys are, are pretty cool i'm not gonna lie but basically there's one guy in particular that stood out to me there's a few that stood out to me in the group but this guy specifically i wanted to touch on because i think it's very interesting this guy makes reviews you're like oh he makes reviews that's cool no well hold on a second you see cuties that inspire me. You have Nakey Jakey. So me and him are very similar in that we are both very inspired by Nakey Jakey and like all of these people, honestly. I, I think I relate to like half of these, but anyways. What stands out to me about James specifically, he uses green screen, but he has like a, a blue green screen shield, which I've never seen before ever. And I think that makes him stand out. And I think that's a really cool feature. Cause like initially, yeah, he did that whole Nakey Jakey thing like I did with like green screen in the background and I'm still trying to figure out like my own style to that as well. But basically I think he nailed it on the head with this, with this sort of style, which I've never thought about before. I think it's pretty cool. It has that wacky editing that's similar to like me and Nakey Jakey and whatnot, but it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie see like yeah and this is like one of his older videos how he kind of did the naked jakey stuff but now he's he found his kind of his like own voice in the style and i think that's really cool and i think you should be commended for that for sure commended commended wait commended define commended praise formally oh yeah, yeah, yeah i used that i used the word right okay yeah commended for sure the genre is like very analytical very like review based it's hard to put a cap on like what he talks about for the most part it's like video games and i guess media in general will go with 
He's talked about Harry Potter. He's talked about Call of Duty. He's talked about games. He's talked about Lord of the Rings. So I guess uh, we'll go with like media reviews is how we'll, we'll generalize him, I guess. I realized I liked making people laugh and then I realized that there are some people on YouTube making a lot of people laugh. Then I thought if I liked making a couple people laugh, I'd probably love making lots of people laugh. So now I'm trying to be the person on the YouTube who makes a lot of, okay. So his mindset is very comedy driven. Yeah, and I understand that. There are a few jokes here and there for sure. I guess we'll say comedic reviews is what we'll classify him as. However, like he is pretty analytical, mostly. Visual quality is good, you know, it's pretty high quality, I would say. There's a lot of hours that are put into it, I know for sure. Audio quality is good, you know, he sounds good, you know, you can hear what he's saying, which is good. Does he have music in his videos? I'm not 100% sure. So what's interesting here, and he also does this like bed thing, which is also kind of his thing as well when he's talking. But basically, yeah, he has like music in it, but it's like very faint which works because that way you can like clearly hear what he's saying which is nice purpose of the content i guess in his his in his eyes to make people laugh which i do understand but i think the purpose is also to like inform people about things for sure because like you have weird side of being a server you know that's informing people monty python and the art of subverting expectations you know that's informing people. So it's a very informative channel, right? Which I think is very good. It doesn't really have a story. It's very much like strict review based with a few jokes here and there. People like it because it's very reminiscent of like literally all of these people, which is it's very obvious where he's drawing the inspiration from, which isn't a bad thing at all. I think as long as you can try to make your own original spin on it, then you can have any inspiration you want. I know I personally have a lot of inspirations and I try to make my content very not similar to any of them which is very difficult to do not necessarily a deeper meaning i would say except for the fact that like he wants to make people laugh which i guess is uh it's like a like a subplot you know like making people laugh i like i understand that for sure besides that there's not really necessarily a deeper meaning i mean it's all kind of surface value which isn't bad either like if if you look at a thumbnail you kind of know what you're gonna get which is good i think that's a good way to make videos for sure <laughs> Taylor. So this guy is pretty interesting. I met this guy in person when I went to BlimeyCon, which is pretty cool. Basically, the whole point of his channel is like him living in like the countryside with like barely any internet and like really focusing on like mental health and really focusing on like personal health and personal growth and like personal creativity, which I do think is really interesting to see for sure. I don't know a lot of people that do this necessarily. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know if I know a lot of people that do this necessarily, so I think it's really interesting. Only 150,000. I remember when he, I, I literally remember when he first started this channel where like he initially did like an Ask Jordan type deal, but it's instead developed into this like personal developmental journey of his, which I do think is really cool and really interesting. I know watching these videos, it's like really informative, but also really personal, which I think is an interesting combination for sure. Although he's he is kind of riding on the coattails of Blimey Cow, which is to be expected because that's like half a million subscribers at this point. He has really developed his own personal voice, which I do think is important because you can really watch these videos and not know that he's part of Blimey Cow. Cow. Like it's very obvious, which I do think is really cool. And more recently, like I was literally doing like research for like the series and like literally when I was doing research, he uploaded this video set basically stating like how he wants to be like more personal and basically stating like how he's not going to try to get views, which I do think is important. And like I have seen this trend where he's like a lot more personal, like he literally talks about having the dream wedding with him and his wife, which I do think was a very informative video. Initially, you would think, oh, he's just talking about his life. Well, yeah. He is talking about his life, but at the same time, he's actually like really trying to be informative and really trying to be like objective and like helping people out in that way. And I think that's very interesting. Like this, this video right here, doing this every single day, transform my marriage. And that was like a really good video. It was like very informative. And it's like six, this, this, this I can't, wow. I can't read six, this sip. Gosh, darn it. I can't, you, you can read. All right that make me who I'm like self-improvement you know I think self-improvement is a very 
common thread with this channel which i do think is important i think a lot of people really need to focus on self-improvement in general like it's not just one or two people i feel like as long as we can better ourselves in the world and in society i think we'll be in a better place in the future you know what i mean you know visual quality is good you know it's very simplistic because most of the time he's like talking to the camera about life stuff, which is really cool. Other times he'll have these like super edited videos, but for the most part, he's like very real with the camera, which is good. Audio quality is good. You know, sometimes he'll have like music in and out. Sometimes he won't have music at all because he doesn't feel like it'll add to it, which is fine. You don't need music all the time. As I stated, the purpose of the channel is basically to like inform people about like personal struggles and like i mean if we're talking about storyline this channel in particular is very interesting because it's about this like real person's life right so i guess you could say that this whole channel is like a big storyline of one person and then he'll talk about stories while he's making his own story you know he'll talk about like his marriage he'll talk about like how they're doing as a couple talk about the most painful lesson i learned you know i think people like it because like and because of the initial like blimey cow thing i think people like it because it's very inf informational you know it's very educational honestly people like it i'm sure because of the common thread of self-improvement which is very obvious here and i do think that's very important in our culture regarding like a deeper meaning i mean honestly i not really except for the fact of like that whole self-improvement aspect it's not really a deeper meaning it's just a common thread junkie janker bro what are these names <laughs> all right so basically gumball from amazing gumball made a youtube channel right now i'm gonna talk about these three videos specifically because these videos are okay but the Minecraft comeback is where his channel like really increases in quality, I'm not gonna lie. So in his Minecraft comeback video last year, he did a, he did a green screen, see? He, he Wow, Nakey Jakey clone, Nakey Jakey clone, just kidding. No, but this video is actually really good. I, I'm not gonna lie, I actually found him from this Minecraft video, not because he's uh, the voice of Gumball. Visual quality is like, it's really high quality in the sense of like, it's it's fast editing. Audio quality is good, you can hear what he's saying. You know, he has music here and there. He has sound effects for jokes. Purpose of the content is very much entertainment based. Like, he literally has top 10 monkey moments, which is like this weird, like, I can't tell if this is a parody or not, but like, very entertainment based I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like a, a parody list he's literally l ranking like the top 10 monkey moments and talking in like a very comedic way and everything so i'm pretty sure the whole point is comedy and or entertainment to put it generally story there's not really a story it's kind of just like each video is its own thing he has some stories like in in his monkey moments to give context to his top 10 monkey moments i mean it's a great video it's it's very chaotic i think people like it because like he's the voice of gumball making a youtube channel that could be one but if we're talking from like an objective perspective without bias right I discovered him from his Minecraft video, right? And I didn't know he was the voice of Gumball till way later. So I think if we're talking about like the Minecraft video. It was definitely like high quality of like the cuts and like the green screen and everything that really caught my attention. There's not a lot of things on the internet that like really catch my attention, but this Minecraft video definitely did. Now, this is not a deeper meaning. I mean, it's kind of face value in the sense of like, wow top 10 monkey moments and you're gonna get top 10 monkey moments you know what i mean but no i would definitely recommend this channel specifically this minecraft video because i think that's really good the monkey video is good too but for different reasons monkey video is way more comedic minecraft is way more info informational creel tube i found this guy from shammy because shammy shouted him out in a video so why am i doing it because he good youtuber he make good video Nah, but for real though, he only has 52,000 subscribers and he makes animations. And that in and of itself is like just kind of sad to see that he doesn't have more uh, views for sure. Because like his animations are pretty good. They're very simplistic, but they're very chaotic at the same time, which I think is interesting. I watched this virus. Yeah, it's funny because like he posted this yesterday when I was doing research for the series. He posted this yesterday. This is a good video. I recommend this one visual quality is good because it's like he makes animated reviews the whole point is like he'll he'll have like an initial storyline and then like he'll like weave a game in there somewhere and then he'll go back to animation but like he'll actually like review the game as well and so like i saw this video right i was researching i'm like oh he posts a new video epic this virus 
games video is good what i will say is that uh crew will say naughty words occasionally and he his his humor humor is also kind of edgy so if you like that then you might like this visual quality is good because it's like half animation and then half gameplay it's kind of like pbg except animated in a weird way that's the best way i can describe it even though I probably shouldn't compare other people to other YouTubers. I should probably try to speak objectively. Audio quality is good for sure. Does he have music? I think he has music. He has like very like jazzy music for his videos, which I think is very interesting. I don't see a lot of people using that, but I think that's very interesting. The audio quality is interesting because like it's good and it's like it sounds very natural, like he's playing like an actual character, which I do think is interesting. I think the purpose of this content is to entertain and inform. These are my videos. I probably give them a seven out of ten. Fair dude. No, I feel that. I think the purpose of this content is to entertain and inform people about specific games, whether good or bad. I, yes, as I said before, there is a storyline because that's kind of like the basis of the video. So you'll see here how it's about virus games. Well, that means like that the storyline will relate to that in some way, which I do think is interesting. People like it because people like games, people like animation. So why not combine the two in this in this weird marriage, right? And also, I think some people like it because Shammy shouted him out. I think some people like it because people like animation, people like games, people like reviews, people like game reviews. People like it because the animation style is very interesting because it's simplistic yet chaotic, which is really weird to find and or see. But that's the best way I can describe it. Simplistic yet chaotic not necessarily a deeper meaning i mean it's it's pretty pretty on the nose with like its messages and stuff like that but it's good it's definitely good i i definitely check it out it's one of the more unique channels for sure i don't see anybody else necessarily doing this long beach griffey now i know i said that i was gonna cover a lot of small boys and this guy has like two and a quarter million subscribers. And you're probably wondering, why are you talking about him then? Well, because A, he's still an indie project. All of these YouTubers are indie projects, if we're being technical here, right? Like, that's what they are. That's what YouTubers are. I haven't found like a good way to make a video about this guy, but I do feel like I've needed to because this guy, in my opinion, now I'm going to be subjective now because this is my opinion now, right? This guy is, in my opinion, the funniest guy on YouTube I've ever seen. And he's very under the radar, despite the fact he has two and a quarter million subscribers. Now, now I'm gonna say this, Caleb City, which is similar to his content, will always get trending. This guy will never get trending. Why? This guy talks a lot about social issues in a very comedic way. What I love about this guy is that, basically what I'll do is he'll, most of the time he'll have two characters. He'll have one character saying something absolutely ridiculous but also relates to our society and then he'll have another character be like what and that formula in and of itself is just really funny because he relates it to like certain social issues that are happening nowadays and i think it's really funny it really like shows what's happening in our society which i do think is very interesting and i discovered this guy like two years ago and i've been meaning to somehow make a video about this guy but one of the reasons i haven't been able to or haven't like figured out a good way is because like a he's kind of blown up now so i don't feel the need to talk about him anymore but also like his comedy is it's sometimes dark and it's sometimes very provocative that's the word his comedy is very provocative right it's it's for a very specific kind of audience i will say i'm the kind of guy that doesn't get offended a, a lot of the time or basically like at anything i think i've i like i find this to be pretty funny he can be crass on occasion but i do think because of that the comedy tends to be better for sure but the thing is he's not being crass for being crass's sake right he's actually like highlighting social issues in a comedic way genres comedy obviously it's social issues put to comedy in the form of vibrant characters which i think is interesting audio quality is good you know he'll he'll talk and then like at the end he'll have like a song play to really like feel the moment purpose of the content is to make people laugh i think that's very obvious because all of his videos are very comedic and very like loud he's a very loud kind of guy too i think that's also the other thing he's very introspective which is very interesting he's introspective in a comedic way relating to social issues each 
video is its own little story, right? That reflects our current world. People like it because he's loud. People like it because he's funny. People like it because he does things like he talks about anime on occasions. He talks about real life situations in a comedic way. The Uber Eats versus Postmates video is pretty good. The deeper meaning part is interesting, right? Because like the whole point of the channel from what I'm seeing is like putting comedic spins on social issues, right? And that's kind of the deeper meaning as is, right? Cancel the cancel culture is the perfect example. He'll literally address like the deeper meaning and be like, wow. I don't know how to end this video. This is just sad. And it's like, yeah, dude, cancel culture sucks. But in general, like, I I think this guy is like the funniest I've ever seen on YouTube. He really gets suppressed by YouTube because of how like just over the top he can be. But yeah, this guy's great. Mama Max. Now, this is another one of those YouTubers that isn't necessarily small, but he's very, very niche. And I think that's my excuse <laughs> i don't know i remember because some ordinary gamer was talking about the controversy he had regarding like his video being removed off of youtube for a few reasons but basically he has this spooky playlist right what i will recommend is these six videos the rest of his channel in my opinion does not compare to what he's doing now so basically he makes these like dark documentaries where it's like he has this really cool narrative also built in so like he's has like this really deep luscious voice which like initially draws you in and then you just get like invested by the topic because of how it's written so like you have you won't believe what this children's game is hiding and it's like whoa what is it hiding you know so you have the initial intrigue and then you click it and then it's like it's very much a documentary it's very much a documentary with like a hint of creepiness Maybe not a hint, maybe like a little bit more than a hint. The whole point isn't being creepy, right? The whole point is like highlighting slash exposing these certain things in the world that are really like underground, which I do think is interesting. Like, I'm so glad I discovered this guy because like I, I'm like addicted to his videos. They are so good. They're so well put. The narrative is incredible where they're not like overtly creepy, but like they're unsettling. They're not too unsettling, but they're I, I think they're that perfect middle ground of like not unsettling and unsettling. And I think it really like keeps that level pre pretty good. He's got like transition screens, which are like really well animated. Everything about it just seems ominous. And he's very good at keeping that tone throughout the video. This is mostly due to the music that it uses which just like really portrays his voice in the very not maniacal but like a very introspective yet ominous tone i've just never seen anything like this the purpose of the content i believe is to expose the bad things that are happening in the world he literally has a video called i found predators on youtube this is what i did to them like he's really trying to find these people that are doing bad things and exposing them and like actually helping the world by like shutting these people down you know which i think is really constructive good thing about all of the videos like his more recent videos is like that the power of the story like the whole narrative that he just creates over time with each video you can tell it's incredible like the it's a level of storytelling that is very rare to see on youtube in my opinion and so i do appreciate the level of like increased momentum is just amazing People like it because they like dark, spooky, scary things, right? But I think also people like it because like of him, like his voice is very like deep and very like introspective. People like to know about things such as the simulation game is linked to a disturbing cult. Ooh, sounds interesting, right? And it's like, oh, what game is that? You know, so people like it for the spooky aspect. People like it for the narrative aspect. People like it because of like him. People like it because they want to see him like exposing and taking down these people that are doing bad things. The deeper meaning is, hey, don't do bad stuff and mama won't come after you. <laughs> That's the deeper meaning. Radical Soda. This is another one of those like in the middle boys where he's like, he's not, I don't think he's full time yet, but he's getting there. One of the reasons I 
have been so conflicted on publicly addressing, talking about this person in a video is because of his thumbnails. Now, his videos, really good, really high quality. He's a pretty funny guy, very analytical, but he also does like this cool animated style on occasion. The one reason why I didn't want to make a video on this guy, even though his videos are like really, really good, are his thumbnails. Some of his thumbnails are like suggestive and it's like, great. And so that literally because of that reason, it's it stopped me from making like a gems of the internet on this guy. I think this guy, what he does is really, really good. I think his reviews are amazing. They're really long, but they're like also like really informative and really like comedic. They're comedic in the way that reminds me of John Tron. In fact, I was even considering making a video about this guy called Radical Soda, the John Tron of game reviews, you know? So if we ignore the thumbnail fact for just a second, if we ignore that, his more recent thumbnails are better, but like his older ones are kind of yikes. So if we can look past that for just a tiny second, right? His videos are really good. The genre is like comedic game reviews in a sense like the whole point isn't to be comedic the whole point is to like review these like older games like sonic unleashed harry potter and the chamber of secrets looney tune for the ps2 he's also done like pokemon sword and shield which are like his big reviews but like he mostly focuses on like these these smaller type games or not the smaller type the like older type games we'll just say games in general though how did i find it i found it because i think it got recommended to me but dude once i discovered this guy i binged watched his videos and then like i literally started like researching and writing about him but then i'm like oh his thumbnails are kind of mm, not really for my audience yikes again if we look past that please his videos are actually really good basically i was scared of making a video on this because i don't want people to go to his channel for my channel and be like oh his thumbnails are too suggestive i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that was kind of what i was fearing visual quality is good you know he's been using green screen a lot more shows what he's talking about shows gameplay he'll kind of cut back and forth sometimes between him and the gameplay most of the time it's gameplay audio quality is good i he'll have music on and off it really depends on the video and like the pacing he'll have the music cut out when he's telling a joke sometimes to to really hone in on the fact that he's telling a joke which i think is funny sometimes i do a show on video games purpose of the content entertaining reviewing older games or games in general He's really good at like going through the entirety something of something and giving like a, a an actual review on all of it, which I do think is good. Purpose of the content is really to like inform in a very like deep divey way, which I think is interesting. Storyline, I mean, not really. Sometimes they'll have a storyline regarding like him in the videos. Like he has characters here and there that he'll do when he's not like showing the gameplay. So that way he can make like jokes and stuff, which is why I was like reminded of John Tron in that way where he'll like cut back to him in real life and do like a comedic joke in some way. People like it because of the games that he's talking about. People like it because of the comedy. People like it because of his long hair. I mean, he's got some pretty nice hair. I'm a little jealous, but you know, whatever. Not necessarily a deeper meaning. That's not a bad thing. His videos are very like review based, very comedic, and that's good. Review shark i think i found this guy on like twitter i honestly can't remember 89 subscribers 89 subscribers now this is a very interesting channel because he makes these long form reviews dude genre is animated review so similar to creel except he's a shark and like the animation isn't chaotic he only has three videos but man visual quality is good the animated bits are pretty polished pretty clean pretty pretty vibrant so basically he'll have what he's talking about on the screen here while he's talking which i think is pretty interesting so you have this weird combination of both like review and animation he'll also have some like characters here and there to kind of like really question what he's talking about what he'll do is he'll cut from him talking and the screen to the screen and he'll keep doing that. Science is always better than magic. You could research spellcasting for years to master throwing a single fireball around. <laughs> or 
or you could just <laughs> he'll also have these like illustrations of some examples that he's talking about if he can't find like a visual rep representation in the gameplay he's got some pretty decently fast cuts which is kind of nice and it really keeps your attention on what he's talking about so he gives like a lot of examples of what he's talking about you don't want the players to feel bad or conflicted about the things they're shooting games are fun you know you don't want to be thinking about these enemies <laughs> this bleeds into some of the most popular types of enemies in games zombies demons aliens people that aren't white you know things you don't question <laughs> shooting so when you need to establish a shooter, <laughs> Oh, that was a good joke. He'll also have some jokes here and there that kind of just hit you out of nowhere. Purpose of the content is to entertain, to make people laugh, to review games. Regarding story, he'll have like these initial story bits to like introduce the game before talking about the game. He's talking about games that people already know about, right? And so because of that, he's able to use these big names to his advantage by making animated reviews about them. I wouldn't say there's necessarily a deeper meaning. They're reviews, animated reviews on games, but they're pretty good. I'm also kind of just shocked that he only has 89 subscribers. Like, that's kind of crazy to me. Technicals. Now, I found technicals because of Slush and Glink doing their podcast, right? And how they described technicals was perfect. They described him as a version of iDubs. And if you like iDubs, you're probably gonna like this guy. He literally made an entire video exposing the biggest hypocrite in the Smash community, according to him. Now, because he's been related to as similar to iDubs, right? He says some words similar to iDubs. So keep that in mind. So yes, very much edgelord comedy we're talking about here. When I say iDubs, I'm not talking about the new iDubs that makes documentaries on ice cream men, no. I'm talking about the classic iDubs with Content Cop. That's the kind of iDubs we're talking about here. But you aren't black, so it isn't racist. If you were black, you would be a watermelon-loving, fried chicken-eating, oh. grape juice-drinking... Yikes. ...who can't drive or swim. Oh. What is a six-letter word that would go after <laughs> grape juice-drinking? <laughs> what is this genre? I'm gonna say commentary i think but also comedy farmers do have grapes okay i actually have some grapes you have grapes like sort of it's gotta be fuck santa hat <laughs> oh no <laughs> dang all right it's pretty decent visual quality i'm gonna say for sure it's well lit he'll have these jokes the visual quality is in the very like analytical and like dissective manner of what he's talking about. The purpose of the content is to inform people about what's going on in the world. Regarding storyline, especially with like the ESAM video, he literally like does like a very specific narrative thing at the end. So like he'll have these moments of creating a narrative, but like overall, it's nothing like too major. People like it because people like commentary videos and people like comedic videos, right? People like jokes for sure. People like it in general when people like expose other people for doing stuff. Similar to classic iDubs. Wow. Not necessarily a deeper meaning necessarily, but it's very much commentary and also comedy. Temi Chang helped make Undertale, right? Temi Chang is known as one of the main artists of Undertale. And she also has a YouTube channel of animations. Wow. There's not a lot of animations here, but they're very high quality, very polished, very colorful. This one here is an animated trailer to a game that, that was made. So this is a trailer to her second RPG maker project. Got it. Genre is obviously animation, as we can see by these thumbnails and the videos. I can't remember how I found it. I want to say somebody in my Discord server mentioned it to me but I, I'm not 100% sure. Audio-wise, she'll use 8-bit music for the background music of her videos. Purpose of the content is to highlight her art skills, I would say for sure. But it also seems like the purpose of her of this specific creativity is to make trailers for itch.io games since that's what most of these videos are. Not necessarily a story, 
except like for what the trailer is trying to portray regarding to the itch.io games people like it because people know temi chang for undertale so obviously they would go here and see oh wow this person is also doing other creative projects not necessarily a deeper meaning i would say but in general these animations are very clean very high quality for sure they get decent amount of views too turbo button turbo button is a review channel where they dissect specific aspects of video games mostly AAA titles they got fast cuts he has little animations here to portray what he's talking about to add diversity to the reviews and also to show specific things that he can't find footage for i found it because shammy also recommended this channel audio quality is good he's got a good voice his audio sounds good he's got subtle background music so that way it's not just his voice purpose is to inform people about specific aspects of video games as i mentioned earlier not necessarily a story because the whole point is to like really inform people and deep dive about these specific things people like it because they like deep dives of these specific aspects of video games now there's not necessarily a deeper meaning because it's pretty surface level but it's also enjoyable will shoulder so now will is a very interesting person that i came across i think i found him from twitter or something like that somebody retweeted something the genre is like video essay is what i would say i came across this channel because this guy made a video about what is happiness and i thought that was really intriguing uh he advertised it on twitter and i was like oh that sounds interesting so i subscribed and he released it this is 50 minutes long i watched the whole thing apparently this is episode one there's going to be multiple episodes apparently but this was really intriguing there was a lot of cool stuff like animations there were a lot of cool examples that were shown to really like show what he's talking about which i think is really important visual quality is really good he's got a really good presentation he literally spent like an entire year on this happiness series that he's coming out with audio quality is good the way he talks is very introspective the background music is very soft so that way it's not covering up what he's saying so you can really understand what he's saying because he's speaking in a very clear tone he really paces himself well he speaks very slow as if he's trying to make a point so that way you understand everything that he's saying i make videos on things i care about focus on passing down wisdom philosophy the good life technology risk and especially re-enchantment so he's very analytical he's very introspective for sure and this channel is very introspective in general it's taking concepts from media and concepts in real life and really like deep diving into them it's not really a story aspect because it's more so dissecting certain elements of media and real life as we know it sometimes even combining the two and relating the two in some way people like it because some people are very introspective like me and they they like to look at things in a different way like say rick and morty he's made three things on rick and morty apparently and so people watch that because it's like oh i love rick and morty and oh wh what is this relating to it finding the meaning in life with rick and morty wow that's crazy i'm actually interested in that so he's using these big names to really like hone in on his skill of being introspective in life i guess philosophy is like a big thing with this channel yoshi mitsu this channel in particular is pretty interesting honestly because it's mostly because of one video in particular that i saw this person only has six videos on this channel they used to have seven but there's a reason why they don't have seven now so basically this video right here the story of michael reeves this is a fantastic documentary i'm not gonna lie i found i don't do i don't even know how i found out about it i think it was recommended to me on youtube and th i think this is like the only video i've seen about like a documentary about michael reeves and i think that's pretty interesting so if you're interested in michael reeves definitely check that out for sure the visual quality is really good he's got he's got some pretty good cuts what i will say is that his mic is a bit iffy but I think that's because he's not used to making this kind of content. So I think in the future, his audio will probably be better. But if you can look past that, it's actually a pretty good documentation on Michael's life and where he is now and where he's gotten. It's pretty interesting. Purpose of this content? Well, initially it was a bunch of highlights from popular YouTubers, but now he, re I think he really wants to focus in on like the documentation of streamers. The other one he made was on Fedmeister, but he removed it because there's been some controversy with that in the past few months. He doesn't have that up anymore, but that was also a good video for the time. Not really a, st well, there is a story, actually, I will say. There's a story in the sense that the narrative is like him dissecting Michael Reeves. People like this because you're taking content for popular streamers and you're putting it in one place. There are a lot of highlight channels out there, and this used to be a highlight channel, but I hope 
that this person is going to continue down like the the original content down the document doc documentary fashion i'm hoping so because this video did really good for everything else on this channel this like popped off it's not necessarily a deeper meaning i mean used to be a highlight channel now it's documentaries zelinky now this person i found from circle tunes because he and him did a collab and it's really funny because i subscribed and i'm like oh he hasn't posted in three months and then I got this video, which is pretty funny, pretty great animation. So well, he does animations, but they're very comedy based. He's also done like some music in the past. The visual quality is good. It's very simplistic and there's not a lot of colors, but when they are, it's like very, very vibrant. But in his more recent stuff, black and white animation, which is pretty cool, helps him stand out for branding. Audio quality is good. Regarding audio quality, he's very much into like the world building aspect per se. So instead of adding music, He'll add like sound effects, like such as being in an office for 24 hours, you know, that sound effect, the like that low humming, he'll add it. So he'll use audio and sound effects more so for world building rather than just background music. The purpose of this content is entertainment because it's very comedy based. Legendary sex icon and international recruiter for a pyramid scheme involving vague references in the early 2000s pop culture, death grips, and fake listening of non bulk pyramids. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Each video is like its own story, basically, its own storyline. What I loved about his more recent video is it was really like a, a social commentary on the current climate of our society, which I thought was pretty interesting. People like it because it's simplistic animation, and I feel like when people see this, people also like it because of these people, for sure. They're obvious inspirations. But I think another re reason why people like this is because it's simplistic, and so artists see this and they're like, oh, I could do that. Can, you know because you're not really coloring in anything per se it's just black and white i don't know there's not necessarily like a deeper meaning and that's not bad it's just comedic animations in black and white to put it generally but they're pretty good they're pretty decent zenny zenny's an interesting case study because he only has 525 subscribers but his videos are actually pretty pretty decent pretty good reminds me very much of shammy if you know i i've said shammy in this series like four times but honestly that's the vibe i'm getting from like this weird video essay animation ish type deal so the genre is like loose animation video essays in a sense about games so these are called obnoxious reviews whereas shammy series is called actual reviews so i understand the uh the, the glaring similarity here it's not bad it's just funny I can tell where his inspiration is, and that's not a bad thing. Unless it's not his inspiration, then I'm kind of shocked. Obviously, looking at his catalog, he made a review of sex games. I haven't seen that video, nor will I. Besides that, his catalog is pretty, pretty decent. He's a very funny British chap, that's what I will say for sure. And because of that, he uses very colorful words, that's for sure. It's a very British comedy, I will say that. Unless he's not British, then. Oops. But no, I watched his obnoxious review of vr games a while ago and that really stood out to me because there's a lot of like world building elements in these videos i guess specifically with that one and the newest one there's really good world building aspects there's a good narrative the loose animation is very interesting because then it builds the fact that it's a character not a person which i do think is interesting because some people like to build characters on the internet while other people would rather just talk to be themselves you know so all in all visual quality is pretty good pretty high quality for a channel that ha that is under 1k it's pretty crazy audio quality is good he doesn't have any like music in the background similar to shammy which is why i keep thinking of shammy when i see this channel because i'm like there's no way he doesn't know about shammy Anyways, I'm, I'm, not, I'm done about Shammy. Purpose of the content, well, they're called obnoxious reviews. They're not obnoxious in, in any regard, honestly. They're actually quite pleasant, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of situations that make it pretty funny. He has some jokes here and there that relate to audio that I think are pretty interesting. Purpose of the content is to entertain people, I guess to put it generally. His videos take a long time to make, I guess, simply because of like the whole animation thing. Like I said, there is like a, a, a subtle, not really subtle, but there is a narrative that is drawn at some point, which I do think makes it stand out a little bit in the review sphere where people add more original elements into the reviews instead of just reviewing the thing itself i think people like this either because of like the british voice because a lot of people like british voices including me timely pacing of the video for sure the fact that there's no music so that way you can actually focus on what the guy is saying instead of being subtly distracted by audio cues in the background the thumbnail art is pretty high quality 
he has a lot of examples in his videos which show exactly what he's talking about and it's pretty decently paced which is really good and it really keeps your attention i wouldn't say there's necessarily a deeper meaning per se but what i will say is that i would probably have more subscribers if i had a british voice so there's that <laughs> oh boy 30 days are now over and oh my gosh dude oh my gosh there's a lot that uh <laughs> that i need to say regarding crystals that's for sure so what i've actually done is throughout this month i've done like little journal entries depending on days if i feel like that there was something i wanted to say specifically so we're going to go over that um, but i think generally uh, this has been a really good experience for learning for sure i just want to make this quick and to the point if possible because one this is the conclusion video i want to make this wrap this up you know in a nice little bow and then also if this is in the compilation video that's coming out or is out already most likely um, thank you for watching that. Uh, I really appreciate everything for sure. Appreciate you sticking around. Now, um, so I should probably just go over the notes that I have here um, on my on my Google Docs, I should say. So I did these by dates. So what I've noticed is that all, all of you are very supportive um, when I try new things, and I really appreciate that. I think that's really cool, and. It's something that I value very highly, if I'm honest, because it's like creativity is something that I love to explore. And when I get the chance to do something new and jump on it, all of you or most of you, if not all of you, are very supportive of that because you all trust me in the sense of <laughs> if I have a new idea, it's probably a good idea because I've sifted through all of the bad ones. Like you have some form of trust in me in that way. And uh, what was interesting is that I noticed a lot of new faces. By that, I mean, there's been some comments that I've, I've never seen people like comment before. So we've gotten some new viewers, which is really, really cool. I really appreciate that. I think that's really awesome. Whether these have been, uh, for lack of a better term, I hate using this term, but lurkers, um, either they were lurkers or actually new people. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for watching the new series. On August 3rd, it made me realize that I haven't really been motivated to work on big projects. And this is where my, excuse me, mental state kind of started going downward, which is weird, but doesn't make sense because I recorded it all 31 days in one day. And then throughout that week, I like edited them. So I was doing like no work because I already did it up front. So it didn't really make sense. By August 3rd, I realized that we were getting less and less views per episodes, which makes sense. But it was really funny because it's like it was going down and then you got the spike and then it went down again. And I think that was really interesting uh, to spectate. Even if you look at my channel now, you can kind of see that that downward slope, which I kind of figured would happen with daily uploads. But you never know until you try it, you know. So then August 4th came around, right? I'm just going to read it out here because I have it here. It's weird how I've been unmotivated to work on the big project when I'm posting every day. It doesn't make sense because I recorded the 31 videos in one day and then scheduled all of them. So it's not like I'm actively working on it. I think that's really interesting how I felt that way um, because I've never done anything to this scale before. So my brain wasn't used to it. Posting every day makes me realize that I don't want to do it forever. I think doing crystals made me realize that I could never be a daily uploader, loader, a daily content maker. Uh, I props to anybody who can and keep it interesting. But like, dude, I just, I, I can never, I don't think I can ever bring myself to uploading daily videos like ever again, because actually we'll get to that reason in a, in a second. I'm not as proud of these videos as I am with my big projects. And this is very, very true. I have not felt like present in my content all this month. And I hate that. I just hate it because it's not, I basically became a viewer. <laughs> like all of you, I'm like, Ooh, what am I going to post? Oh wait, this is my video. I should know. And I didn't, I didn't like that feeling. August 5th, I don't like not knowing that my video got posted because I was busy and forgot to check. Yeah. Or I would get comments rolling in. I'm like, oh yeah, video went up. Like literally in an hour from now, I don't know why I checked my wrist. There's no watch, but in an hour, the last video is going to release. Uh, and so it's like, if it's noon, new video, but it's like, I just didn't like that feeling. And then we jumped to August 13th. So there really hasn't been any thoughts on my brain until August 13th. I have a mental breakdown. I feel overwhelmed. I want to cancel crystals because I don't know how I feel about this series anymore. The views are going down. I feel like people don't care anymore. I feel like I've burned people out. I don't know what to think anymore. This is what I wrote on the 13th because that's legit what I was feeling. And I think I like tweeted something out or something. And 
no, like legit. I, I was actually considering canceling Crystals of the Internet because it was like I I it wasn't enjoyable for me anymore. It was more enjoyable to create all of them, but it wasn't enjoyable to post them day after day, which I do think is interesting. I have been inspired to make a video about a new topic, so that doesn't help me mentally. Also, sub point, this doesn't include the big project I'm already working on. So yeah, so basically I got inspired by a few new video ideas, but I felt like I couldn't work on them because I was already working on a current project. And so because of that, it really like killed me mentally, if I'm honest, because uh, like I always have a philosophy that I do not work on a new project until the current project is done. And I broke that rule because I was so sick and tired of working on the same project. I've worked on the same video for about three months now, and I'm just kind of mentally done with it, but it's not even halfway done. It's, it's bad. And so it was like, it was dealing with that. I don't like uploading daily. I thought that the same day too, August 13th. And yeah, I don't like uploading daily. I don't, if, if I were to go full time on YouTube, I think the most amount I would upload is once per week. I feel like that's the max I could do past that point. It starts becoming really, I start like losing focus. I, I think of what I want my content to be. When you go to daily uploads, the quality is not the same. And I think all of you recognize the quality of the videos were not the same. And I noticed that very heavily and I didn't like that. And so therefore I don't think season two is ever gonna become into existence ever. Initially my thought was, well, if, if it's like 10 years down the road and I want a series when I have like a family and children running around, it's like I want a series that I can do and not have to spend a month on it. But like at the same time, I don't think I can do crystals season two at all. Cause I just, I've, I'm, I'm mixed about it. I've mixed feelings about crystals and looking at the end of the, being at the end of the tunnel now, August 17th, I think I'll take the rest of the month off for my projects instead of trying to get ahead, especially cause it'll probably be best just to refresh myself creatively. Like, this is when I realized that maybe I should take this month to rest and not do any work because I haven't really had a break since I finished high school, which was like two years ago. And so it was this weird mental thing where it's like, oh shoot, I haven't really like taken a break break in a while. And so I did that for a few days and that, and that helped a little bit. That helped for sure. And it was funny cause like a few days later, that's when I started working on the new, new project that I've for the past week now, because it's August 31st right now. For the past week, I've been working on the new, new big project, which is not the one I've been working on for three months. This is a newer project that's gonna take me a very long time. And what's funny is that because of crystals, it's made me want to go in the exact opposite direction. So now, since I've been posting daily for a month, I want to go dark for like so many months I want people to wonder where I am and I just want to be gone from the internet for months and then come back with this like huge project. And that's what I really, 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 really want to do. And I haven't said anything because it's like, not a lot of people are going to watch this conclusion video. So it's fine. It's whatever. But it's like, that's, that's where I'm, that's where I'm feeling. So that's what I've been doing for the past week. And this new, new project has sparked some sort of passion within me that I haven't felt in a long time. And I think that's sad, but it's also like very rejuvenating that I finally found a project that I've been working on so much now to the point where I could literally stay up all night and want to work on it more. That's how passionate I am about this new, new project. And so I think that's a very good sign that I'm going upward mentally instead of <laughs> downward. But yeah, I, I've been working on some big projects. Patrons already know what's up. Um, one last thing I will say is that my, my discord community has been pushing me to really push discord a lot more and I feel like I haven't. So I'm going to end this by saying, join my discord. If you would like to talk to me in the community and hang out, we sometimes play games together and that's been a lot of fun. We played among us, uh, for like two of my streams and that was like a lot of fun. So I'm hoping to do more community based stuff. But yeah, let me know what you all think about crystals as a whole in the comment section. I am ready to go back to the super analytical, super deep dive stuff again. I miss it. I miss writing. That was another thing with crystals. I miss writing. Um, although crystals of the internet was a way for me to not write, 
and a way for me to really go in depth and be way more personal and way more natural. I do like me when I'm scripted because I feel like that is a way better informational portrayal and I feel like I can inform all of you in a clearer and more concise way because when I'm not scripted I tend to go every which way but when I am scripted I have like a clear focus and I know transitions and I know pacing but when I'm not scripted you get this mess where it's kind of just like I don't know what I'm gonna say next I'm just talking I appreciate all of the patience, all of the um, letting me experiment, but I'm ready to go back to the deep dives. I miss the big videos. I've been talking to some people and they've also missed the big videos too. So I'm going to go back to that, back to how we were before August. And I think it's going to be good. I just needed like a mental break and I needed to do something else because when you do something for so long, you kind of get in these ruts where you kind of feel like you need to do something else because it's not working or maybe you're just not patient enough. And I think I just wasn't patient and patient enough. Cause like, I'm not, I'm, I'm very impatient in general cause I'm just in a weird point in my life um, where I'm just waiting for a lot of things and I'm fed up in general. And every day kind of seems just like a loop of, of still waiting and so because of, I'm in that loop still, it's just like I wanted to change. And I think a change in content was the wrong change. And I apologize because I'm now realizing that I probably shouldn't have done crystals. But I also don't regret it because I feel like it was important to talk about creators that I would have never talked about. But at the same time, I'm wondering if that was a facade in the first place. I'm not even sure anymore. But I do think that it was important to talk about those creators. I just wish that I probably wouldn't have done it in crystals. I wish it, they would have been like their own highly produced videos, but live and learn, right? Big video coming out soon. I don't know when, hopefully in like two weeks, maybe more. No, not sure. We'll figure it out, but uh, yeah.